Okay, today's subject yet again is Luxol. Why Luxol? Because it's such a well-known product. Now, I created a video prior to this. I think I actually have a couple videos on it. I will add a link as an annotation to this video so you can check it out. Basically, it was Darren batting the beehive because if you look at the reviews, the thumbs up, thumbs down, it's about split, I think. Because Lexol, it's like any industry or part of life. There's these big players out there. And at the beginning, they were certainly relevant because there was only a few players. Lexol was one of them. It's been around since like the beginning of time. And most people, whether you're a car detailer, an enthusiast, or just a car owner, most people have heard of Lexol. And it's a natural product to go to because it's so well known. And it's what I call a, uh, a problem of guilt by association, which means that it's so well known that it's guilty of being the best or good or the go-to product just because it's so well known. But yet, do we really know if it's effective or if there's better alternatives to it? And that's a problem with a lot of name brand products or, I mean, fill in, the, fill in the blank. It could be celebrities. I don't care what it is. Every industry has them. Detailing, car care, this is one of them, Lexol. So it's not that I think, it's not that Darren thinks it's a bad product, okay? And we must distinguish between two of their very specific, specific products, the cleaner and the conditioner. Now, this is Lexol cleaner and part of what is a pet peeve of mine is the way marketing and advertising use certain buzzwords or keywords or headlines to sell product and what they do is they essentially prey on your ignorance for example right here pH Lexol pH well a lot of people have are familiar with the pH scale I would be willing to bet that if you were to actually quiz someone and ask them to explain what the pH scale is, maybe 20% of the population would be able to really uh, define that in a way that actually made sense. Secondly, how do they apply the pH scale and the pH balance of scale to the world of detailing and products? That's even the greater or deeper question and you would eliminate maybe 20% of the group down to like 2%. It's like, okay, tell me what the pH scale even means. What is it? And more importantly, how does it apply to my world as a, a car enthusiast, car owner, or professional detailer? Well, that's where they use terms like pH balanced. It's like, okay, balanced according to what? Balance is a relative term, meaning, let me explain something for you. And this is now going to go into the heading of life skills. Okay, it's called the law of relativity. In other words, you only have big because it's next to something that's smaller. Okay? So let's say my fist. My fist is bigger than, let's say, a quarter. Let's say I had a quarter right here. I don't. I didn't know I was going to go down this road. So my fist is bigger than a quarter, right? Okay, let's just use this, the little circle. My fist is bigger than that little circle, right? Okay, well, my fist relative to this circle is indeed bigger. But let's say I held my fist next to a car. Now, which is bigger, the car or my fist? Well, the car is, duh. But wait a minute, I thought we just said that this was bigger. Well, it is only in relation or relative to this. So the point, that I'm trying to drive home is the law of relativity, which is that something's only bigger because it exists next to something that's smaller. Okay, there's only an inside because an outside exists. If there was no outside, we would have no inside and vice versa. You can only have an outside because an inside exists. I know, I'm really working you down the rabbit hole, aren't I? So to bring it full circle, these manufacturers that talk about pH balance. It's like, okay, balanced according to what? And since this is a leather care product, as in a leather cleaner, it's like, oh, well, 
leather is delicate. It's this natural material that they put in high-end cars and clearly or certainly it must need a special product for the special material, right? Well, that's the emotional Actually, that's that's a lot. That's logic based at a very casual and superficial um, debate or argument, and that's what the industry does: is they want you to become kind of hyper focused and lose track of your peripheral vision or the greater perspective. And so it's like, okay, I've got a brand new car. It's got special leather put for it, and I know I paid paid special money for that special leather, and therefore I need to go in search of a special product to clean my special leather on my special car. It's all about specialness, okay? And that's the emotions. So what marketing and advertising does is they they prey on your emotions because once you. Uh, uh, introduce emotion into the equation all logic and reason for the most part is just tossed out the window that's the problem is emotion is like a feather in the wind it's just tossed and blown about based on the wind currents and the wind currents in this moment to use the metaphor is marketing and advertising so they will they will push and pull and tug at your emotions and you'll make an emotional decision. After you've made that emotional decision, you will then back it up by your intellect. That's how you will rationalize it or justify the decision if after you've made the decision, you decide that, oh, maybe that was a bad decision or maybe it was a decision I should not have made or I wish I could make that decision over because if I could, I would choose something different. So your intellect, suddenly steps in and you rationalize it, you go into denial. Wow, I didn't know this would be a, a crash course on human psychology, but it is a subject that intrigues me forever and I've studied it for years, as well as marketing, advertising, um, psychology, sociology, go down the list because it all ties in together because it has to do with emotion, which generally uh, is generated from here and that's why we associate it with the heart you know this this feel good heart here but the intellect is associated with the brain and that's where a voice of reason intellect rational thinking critical thinking takes place now as a rule i believe that this should be at the steering wheel and the emotion should be in the passenger seat so you lead with this and Life is seasoned with this, okay? I don't want to be a, um, a, a sterile type of robot that just does nothing but thinks with his brain and logic and reason and there's no emotion or feeling or heart into anything. But I know that my intellect makes a much better leader than my emotion. So, back to the point, which is Lexol. Yes, they make good products, but as a professional detailer, I know that their cleaners are limited. Everything has limitations, and most manufacturers will not take the time to tell you like, oh, hey, buy our product, and it's a really good and cool product because it can do this. Okay, that's where they stop. They don't say it's like, oh, by the way, uh, before you buy this, you need to understand its limitations. And here's the limitations of our product. They will never do that, okay? Because then you're going to suddenly, you know what? You're gonna, they're going to take you from here, make an emotional decision, and enter the world of logic and reason. So now you're going to pull back and say, oh, wait, maybe that's not the winning combination for me and my world. Okay, they don't want you doing that. They don't want you to apply logic and reason to it. They want you to make an emotional based decision and that's where branding comes in. Lexol, everyone's familiar with it. I'd be willing to bet that any professional detailer that is using Lexol cleaner exclusively is either A, doing it for presentation value of their customer. Let's say they've got a really high end car and they know that Johnny customer recognizes the Lexol brand, okay? or they're merely working on cars, car leather that is really not that dirty 
and if you have a brand new car you don't have to overthink it because your car leather's just not that dirty so mediocrity as in this product for cleaning is acceptable you don't have to overthink it or the other alternative is that the detailer lacks the experience to know that in order to get leather really clean it's going to require some more aggressive cleaners that are more effective at actually cleaning and breaking down dirt and oils that accumulate on the leather and I'm referring to leather that's actually gotten dirty is in some dirt that is sat around on your leather for months and months or years and years and I have seen some seriously dirty leather and I know that Lexol would clean it to about maybe 70 to 80 percent at best enter what I feel is the winning alternative and that's the all-purpose cleaner by Meguiar's now is it the only product that works or the only alternative well of course not it's just the product that I've chosen by no means am I a spokesperson for Meguiar's I could push any product down your throat and get you to buy it or at least some of you to buy it and I could spin it any way I wanted to but I don't really care uh, I just want you to know what a I use B why do I use it well based on experience that's why I use it so that's really the more than just how do you do something it's like well Darren why do you choose that product I choose this product because it simplifies my world now I can use a cleaner an all-purpose cleaner to handle probably 80 to 90 percent of the cleaning jobs required in the cars that I detail and I don't just work on the um, you know the prima donnas of the industry the exotic luxury cars that never get dirty because I detail them once a week or once a month okay I see some pretty nasty stuff you know vans kitty hauler vans that smell like roadkill in the middle of summer three days later okay that you know just abs like I need a full body condom to go in and clean these cars okay and that's where I'll break out heavier dutier cleaners how is that for some bad English cleaners that are he more heavy duty how about that but for 80 percent of the time or, or greater I'm gonna use the all-purpose cleaner because it's an all-purpose cleaner I can use it on almost endless uh, materials from leather to carpeting velour plastic soft plastic hard pl plastic go down the list an all-purpose cleaner and this all-purpose cleaner is in fact better at cleaning dirty dirt messier dirt or dirtier dirt than this product is whether it's leather or anything else now this is what's called a dedicated cleaner which means it's labeled for leather use only this is an all-purpose cleaner does that mean you couldn't possibly clean something else with this like hard plastic or whatever yeah you could would I use this on upholstery or fabric something that's porous no I wouldn't do I think it sucks no I don't but do I think it's severely limited when it comes to cleaning leather that is truly dirty yes I do so and the way I raise my voice and lower my voice and kind of come across as some arrogant dickwad okay that's just me being frustrated okay that's not me condescending the world well okay it's me condescending marketing and advertising but it's not really about me condescending it it's me uh, it's more about me mocking it and speaking out against it because I think it's so um, they misrepresent things they take things out of context and they prey on your emotion and they get you to become uh, narrow-minded or hyper-focused so you lose track of logic and reason so that's what I'm really doing when I apply that kind of sarcastic tone to my voice so all-purpose cleaner I'm a huge fan of it if you're a car enthusiast and you've only got your car maybe your wife's car girlfriends boyfriend whatever it would be overkill for you perhaps 
but because it is an all-purpose cleaner, I use it on so many things. It's a concentrate. I use it as a rule on upholstery, a fabric, velour, vinyl, plastic, leather, diluted down 10 to 1. That, mean, that means, and this is where ratios come into the equation, for every one part of this concentrate, I add 10 parts of water to that concentrate. Now, if you get the Meguiar's dedicated all-purpose cleaner bottle, it's got the dilution ratios on the side. Two very common dilution ratios are four to one and 10 to one. So what that means is you fill it to that line of your desired dilution ratio with water first, then the rest of the way with the concentrate. Now there's this ongoing debate as to whether that means to this line, to that line, that line, or that line. The reality is, is it's really not gonna make or break your world, okay? That's where you don't need to overthink it. Now I have measured it. Now according to Meguiar's, and I've done my research, I'm pretty sure if I recall, and the reason I don't know specifically in the moment is because it's just a non-issue, is that it's to the bottom of these ribbed lines. Rib for your uh, user experience pleasure. Uh, anyhow, sorry. That's what I've been educated that it's to that line. Now, personally, when I do it, I do it up to the top. That's just me. Once again, I really don't think you need to overthink it. Okay, not that area. So that's what I use. So today I'm going to, and this is where I say to you, my viewers, do I know everything? Of course not. Am I married to any one product line? No, I'm not. I could push any product down your throat if I wanted to. I'm just simply telling you what I use and it's based on my experience and I wanna tell you why I've chosen it. I chose this because it works, it's economical, and uh, it's easy to get. I mean, it's pretty available as far as online and so forth, either through my website or wherever. And it produces results. It's better at removing dirt than the Lexol. So that's why I chose it. And I continue to use it year after year after year. Okay, so I'm gonna take you on location now that I've just droned on for I don't know how many minutes and talk about shoving a lot of information at you. So I'm gonna take you on location and show you a specific case study. Okay, the first point is the leather, and I've used this in the other videos as I've explained. So here we are. Uh, I wanna highlight a couple things. For example, this is a true scuff, meaning it cannot be cleaned away. It is not dirt. The leather has literally been damaged and it's permanent. The only way, you cannot clean that away. Also we have here, what happens is, as the car owner gets in and out of the car, they sit down, they slide their butt out of it, and it pinches this piece right here, and it abrades the leather to the point where it does permanent damage. You cannot clean that away either. But overall, this leather remains in excellent condition. As I said, it has 55,000 miles on it. It is a daily driver and I have used no conditioners on this. I do not use Lexol. I use Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner, diluted down 10 to one. That's all I've done. Does this leather feel dried out? No, it doesn't. It feels as good as day one. How do I know that? Because I've been taking care of it since day one. So that's my first point about the leather. So, I hope you enjoyed the little tour firsthand of the autobiography. And the final conclusion is that I want to thank you guys for your support. It's amazing. I love hearing the stories that you guys share with me. Um, and thank you for using my links, going to my website. In every video underneath that show more, click on it. There will be a link to my website. That's how you can help me produce more and more of these videos. And I'm hoping that you gain something from them. From the feedback that I get, of course it's not all positive, I know I'm going to piss some people off along the way, and this video will probably piss off a few more people along the way, I'm okay with that. I'm not trying to please everyone, I'm just trying to deliver 
useful information that's actually truthful in a very, very transparent and candid manner. Okay, so Lexol, if you want to use it as a cleaner, go for it. If you're getting the results and your customers are happy, then go for it. If you want a better product and a better alternative, I say go with the Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner. It's not the only product, it's just what I use personally. Um, and by the way, you can use both, which means that if you are a big fan of leather conditioners, and that's a whole nother video series, then clean with this and use Lexol conditioner to make you and your cu customer happy if that's what you choose to do. But I promise you, you'll get better results with cleaning if you pick something like this. It's not going to clean every single situation you come across, but I'm telling you between 80 and 90%, this is all I use on the interior of cars. Headliner, seats, the back of seats, the upholstery, the carpeting, the floor mats, the door panels. The only time I don't spray it directly on it or that I would be cautious about using it is on the instrument cluster, the clear plastic glass. And I'm going back 20 years when I actually, what it did is it just dried it out a little bit. That was 20 years ago. I haven't had a problem since, but I keep away from it. And I keep it off of navigation screens. You know, the little, I don't even know what they're calling them today. You know, the road, the road map, navigation screen, whatever you want to call it. That's the only two places that I apply a little caution. Other than that, totally safe. It's green in color. It's not going to stain your upholstery. I've had that question asked. You don't need to rinse it off. And as I shown as I showed in the video, it just works. Okay, and I'm talking long term. It works.